you know, you have a, an administration that's out of control. We're fortunate to be here today with Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. Congresswoman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. As a born and raised guy from Dallas, I'm really proud to have you representing us. And thank you for your work in Washington, D.C. Thank you. I'd like to start off by asking you to give a little bit of, uh, of information around the work you're doing and what makes Texas the number one state for business and, and how you've seen that put into action in Washington, D.C. Well, I wish I could take credit for what Texas is doing, but unfortunately, the federal government could learn from what the state is doing. You know, recognizing that businesses are part of the solution mm -hmm. and not the enemy, recognizing that having a positive business environment, which means recognizing that uh, right now regulations are strangling small businesses, mid-sized businesses, mm -hmm. and large businesses on, uh, is not a good thing. It's not a good thing for growth. It's not a good thing for your communities. It's definitely not a good thing for um, 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 bringing country, uh, companies back from foreign countries. Yeah. So I think low regulations, I think low taxes, and, and an appreciation for what businesses produce in communities are all reasons why you see the Texas miracle happening. That's right, and you mentioned there kind of the trend that we've seen of, of the risk of some businesses leaving the United States and, and the landscape that we're in in terms of international competitiveness. We've seen a lot of aggressive actions from the Biden administration, from Gary Gensler at the SEC. What have you seen lately, and, and what are your thoughts on, on some of the posturing that we've seen from, from those individuals? You know, you have a, an administration that's out of control. Uh, the Biden administration added um, $200 billion worth of regulatory costs and burden on, on businesses during his first year in office. And shockingly, he followed that up with introducing a trillion dollars worth, worth of regulatory burden costs in his second year in office. Mm. You got to fight back on that. But you also see agencies that are running amok right now. There's no accountability. They just continue to grow, protect their own, mm -hmm. and are not taking law and enforcing it, but they're actually creating their own laws. That's right. And I think that's exactly what you're seeing from the SEC right now. There's a, there's a push by this administration on Green New Deal programs that they, can't get, they cannot get passed through Congress. They can't get passed through the Senate. So they're creating it in the agencies to be able to enforce. Mm -hmm. And you know we passed last week the RAINS Act, which should be taking some of that control back and making sure that any of these massive um, um, regulatory issues, massive executive orders that are being pushed mm -hmm. through the agencies, that they can't do that. They're going to actually have to get them passed as, as constitutionally um, um, provided by, the Cong by, by Congress. Great. So those are some of the things that we're seeing, but it is, it is a dangerous landscape and it's a horrible precedent. It is a dangerous landscape, certainly agree there, and I'd like to speak more specifically to the digital asset industry. Of course, recently, this industry has really come under fire uh, under Gary Gensler at the SEC. We saw last week um, Representative uh, Warren Davidson has uh, announced that there will be a bill coming forth in the House of Representatives that specifically seeks to address this issue of SEC overreach. Yeah. Uh, do you have some opinions or insights that you could share around that bill and, and what your thoughts are on it? Well, I want to congratulate the members of our Oversight and our Financial Services Committee. They're actually looking into this and they're getting down to the, to the, to the bottom line about what's happening and, and this overreach. Yep. Um, very disappointed that uh, political members um, within, specifically within the SEC, uh, Gensler in particular, are not taking those, those um, requests seriously, are mm -hmm. not providing the information, are seemingly lying to Congress mm -hmm. and are overstepping beyond what is constitutionally um, available. So yeah. I am supportive of what uh, Warren Davis and uh, Tom Emmer are doing yep. to try to bring control and sanity to that agency and I look forward to supporting it. We certainly are as well and, and as a Texan, I thank you for the work on, on behalf of, of really reining in that, that overreach. We at the Texas Blockchain Council are, are excited to have the potential to welcome you at our summit in a few months in November uh, here in Fort Worth. I think you're a, you're a tremendous voice and, and you bring a lot to the discussion. One of the issues that, that we talk about a lot is if you look back through history, the semiconductor was invented here in Texas, but yeah. primarily commercialized in California, yeah. an, an opportunity lost. We see a similar dynamic with the digital asset industry, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining, that we have an opportunity to commercialize that here in, in Texas. How do you view that dynamic and, and how can we make a difference to ensure that we don't miss out on this opportunity? There's an awesome opportunity for Texas. I mean, you think about it for so many reasons, you know, some that we've already talked about, whether or not it's our, it's our business environment, um, our welcoming business environment, whether or not it's our infrastructure, the people, the fact that we're actually bringing um, on the huge numbers of companies here, but also looking at the welcoming nature of some of the cities, right? What mm -hmm. Fort Worth is doing 
with, with blockchain right. and with mining. Yep. Um, you know, probably the biggest, not just the people, not just the environment, not just the lack of regulations or the, or the, the stifling regulations that you see in, in California, but is a legit uh, energy supply. That's right. I mean, that for mining, it takes a tremendous amount of energy, which is in short supply and being attacked every day in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I can't think of a state that is a better producer of energy, but also recognizing the fact of what it does um, for each and every working family mm -hmm. and for our state. Yep. So having that, uh, it's having the ability to have um, um, an energy um, 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 direct force within our state versus California, yep. I, I welcome it. I welcome it. I think I it's agree. a new technology. We should be wrapping our arms around it. And considering how many Californians are moving you know, to <laughs> Texas over the last couple of years, we'll have plenty of, of work to put them to. It's only natural. Congresswoman Beth Dan Van Dyne, thank you for your time. Thank you. And God bless Texas. It's great to see you. Thanks. Hey, it's Amy. Click over here to subscribe. Click over here for more content. And we'll see you next time.